Right, this video is for people who are interested in antennas. They don't really know what they do, how they work, where the gain is. You get more gain in one direction than another. So what we'll do is we will we'll head into this book, actually, which is the foundation book. I'm on page 13 here, but since I know this off by heart, I can put it away. And we'll get my, my book out, and we can draw things for you, all right? So there's five basic antennas and well i'll give you a sixth and seventh just for fun this pen is very bleedy so it goes all the way through never mind we'll start off with a quarter wave ground plane now do you remember last time i might as well fill that in last time we had the coax and the braid on the outside so i'll call that the center i'll call that the braid all right a quarter wave ground plane basically looks like this this being a quarter of a wavelength now we did wavelengths and frequencies not so long ago on this video so if you've got uh, let's say we're aiming for 28.5 megahertz you remember what we did last time we start off with 300 and we divide it by 28.5 and that is the wavelength, 10.526, it says. We need a quarter of a wavelength for our, that's the centre of the conductor of the coax, by the way, goes up here. And the braid of the coax will go to these. All right, that makes the kind of the circuit. So if we divide that by four, we have 2.63. By the way, 2.6 2.63 meters uh about a man and a half in feet <laughs> right interestingly if we div if we multiply that by 0 0.93 we'll have a very accurate length if you really wanted to cut one of these 2.45 big five because the velocity factor how fast the rf travels up an insulated piece of wire is about 92 93 percent so 2.45 would be approximately perfect for 28.5 megahertz so that's the ground plane all right and what would happen is your rf technically would go out this way and this way perpendicular to the vertical all right so we can take one of these all right and we can use one of these legs and this bit and we can make it horizontal so we'll draw a horizontal dipole so we'll have a couple of trees and we'll have a horizontal dipole it might look like this where we've got the center conductor to here and the braid to there these will be equal size, unlike what I've drawn here. So I will go over it in purple at, to say we've got a piece of cord going from there to there and a piece of cord going from there to there. So the actual length of this dipole is from there to there, which is equal. Then we've got our feeder coming out, coax coming down to the radio. How big are these legs? Well, very simple. They'll be 2.45 meters long if it's for 28.5 if it's for a different band let's say 7.2 300 divided by 7.2 41.66 times 0.92 on average uh, divided by four we're looking at roughly for the 40 meter band 7.2 megahertz 9.6 these would be 9.6 each side and interestingly enough you could have a fan dipole this isn't in the syllabus this is for free you can have a fan dipole because you can have put another one underneath it you can have two of the same connection point that's a fan dipole all right so dipoles basic verticals we can take like a tv aerial right we take the top of a chimney now I don't know why I'm actually drawing you a chimney, but anyway, we'll take the top of a chimney. 
very often you'll have a pole sticking on top of the chimney and then you'll have a little antenna sticking here. Now, how do these work? This is called a Yagi. Uh, uh, whatever. Your RF goes in that direction. That's because if we zoom into this bit here, the one in from the back you would connect your coax to. The coax goes to there. If we zoom in, right where we've got this boom and this, this thing here, it's actually a dipole where the coax connects to there and there. And it's a Yagi, because that was the man's name. There was another name involved as well, and the experts will tell us what that man's name is. All right. Um, our RF goes in that direction, so we've got these. This is called a reflector, and these are called directors. And you can, you can stack them. You can have more than one. And uh, the higher, more gain there is, the bigger it generally is. But it has to be tuned. It has to be a dipole. All right. And our RF goes in there, and the longer it is, generally, the more focused the beam will be out into the ether. All right, so that's a Yagi. And the other thing they want me to tell you is something called a 5 eighths. I don't know why they want to tell, you, tell us this, but a 5 eighths is it's got a coil at the bottom, and it is actually 5 eighths of a wavelength. So if we do... 5 divided by 8, it's 62.5% long. So 62.5%. So if we take our 300 to divide by 28.5 times 0.625, 5 eighths would be 6.5, 6.6 meters long. There is a slight benefit over a 5 8 is that if the pattern on a quarter wave, and we do, we'll do patterns in another video, pattern on a quarter wave looks like that. Basically, a 5 8 you get more out the bottom and less at the top. And very often, we're after more gain lower down. Okay, the lower down you can get the pattern, the further your RF will go, because we don't want to transmit straight up unless we're talking to the space station. So we've done quarter wave, five eighths, Yagi's. Uh, they want me to introduce something called an end fed. I don't know why, but an end fed generally will have a little box of tricks the size of about four cigarette packets. I don't smoke, but whatever. And it has something called, it's a transformer. Okay, so you'll plug your coax into the side and there is a single wire that goes off and it's an end fed it's an end you can either fend, eat, feed it at one end or the other very often it's handy for a small house where they just want to come out the window and along round a tree and down somewhere okay these can be either random or you can use something called a 49 or a 61 to 64 to 1 transformer you don't need to know that you just need to know it's a box and it can be a half wave end fed you don't need to know any of the numbers, all right? So, NFED, Yagi, 5 eighths, quarter wave, and a dipole. I introduced the fan dipole for you. This is bonus material, okay? By the way, I'm not paid for this, and I'm not expecting a lot of views. So maybe reward me with a like, or maybe comment. Say something nice. Or watch to the end. Then YouTube will think, oh, everybody wants to watch to the end. <laughs> that helps as well. If all else fails, you could even subscribe. I wanted to do as a bonus material a loop. Okay, so a loop could be square, uh, it could be triangular, and again, like all our other antennas we've built, we'll have the two different colours when a coax goes. All right, a loop though generally has in this area a little box of tricks called a four to one transformer because the impedance that magic number of a loop is somewhere between 150 and 220 ohms, eh, depending on all sorts of variables. You can imagine if you if it was 200 ohms and you had a four to one transformer, it would take that down to 50 ohms. Do you remember that 50 ohms magic we talked about? 50 ohms. After this, we've got some proper exciting stuff. Well, we're gonna do radiation patterns. 
effective radiated power and effective isotropic radiated power. It sounds boring, but it's actually quite good fun. We'll might throw in polarization on that, or maybe we'll do a separate video. Okay. Then we've got matching antennas, standing waves, SWR, balans, and dummy loads. All right. If you want to know what a dummy load is, stay tuned and we'll show you. All right. <laughs> so my name's Callum from DX Commander. May the force be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.